Hello and well, welcome back to the Raisina Fireside Chat. My name is Raji Rajagopalan. I'm the director of the Center for Security, Strategy and Technology at the Observer Research Foundation. In this chat, we will be talking about quantum and the future of technology. We are using quantum technologies for everyday use, whether it is quantum communications, quantum sensors, or quantum computations. Yet, we know very little about the technology and how it's going to impact our lives. To talk about this technology and what it entails, I'm very happy to welcome Mr. Vikram Sharma, founder and CEO of Quintessential Labs from Australia. So welcome, uh, Vikram. And uh, I'm going to start off. Let me begin by asking you a broad question. Uh, this is, of course, we are seeing the uh, beginning of the second quantum revolution. What does it really entail? What are its different contours that you see? And how is it likely to pan out in the coming years? Well, thank you very much, Raji. A real pleasure to be joining you for this fireside chat. Um, certainly, quantum is at a very interesting pivotal point, even, we could say, in its development. Um, the first quantum revolution, arguably which started in the 1950s, uh, has really shaped our lives over the last 70 years. If you look at the transistor, you look at uh, MRI, GPS, lasers, which have really transformed our lives and our societies, have all been uh, based on this idea of leveraging quantum effects that exist in nature. And my goodness, haven't we done that so well? You know, so much so that if you look at your cell phone there, exactly. you'll have several billion transistors within right. that cell exactly. phone. In fact, so much so that I'm told the latest microprocessor chips that come from AMD and Intel mm. Mm. have 40 billion transistors on a single chip. <clears throat> so now, though we're at the cusp, at the dawn, you could say, yeah. of the second quantum revolution, and in this uh, phase of the technology development, what we're doing is instead of leveraging effects which exist in nature itself, we're engineering quantum effects that don't exist naturally. Okay. As a result of that, yeah. we're seeing a whole host, as you identified yeah. in your opening yeah. comments, of new capabilities coming to the fore. Quantum computing, mm. sensing yeah. and metrology, yeah. and as you said, quantum communications. Looking at each one of these briefly in turn, quantum computing is really going to, for certain types of problems, redefine the scope of what is possible mm. to be achieved on a quantum computer. Today, certain types of problems just are not solvable on our best supercomputers yeah. today. Whether it's um, simulating molecules, mm. we can't simulate anything more complex than a coffee molecule sure. today. Uh, optimizing certain kinds of transactions, just not possible. Quantum computers will bring DNA sequencing, yep. portfolio planning for financial transactions, uh, and a range of other very complex calculations possible. If we look at the, the sensing and the uh, metrology part, some tremendous applications there, whether from early detection of disease, imagine picking up cancer when yeah. it's at the single cell level, yeah. Uh, to various applications in defense. So one of the um, very challenging problems for particularly submarines, for example, mm -hmm. is when you're in a GPS denied environment yeah. to be able to determine what your position is. Quantum, uh, particularly mm -hmm. second generation, offers you capabilities there. And finally, advanced imaging. Imagine mm -hmm. future satellites which are placed in, in space. Right and they're able to essentially turn the oceans transparent, as we have to say. That redefines our, um, our defense strategies, there were uh, military strategies that we use today. And finally, in quantum communications. So one of the big challenges we will have um, as a result of quantum computer, for all the benefits it will mm. bring, mm. it will actually break many of the technologies we use today yep. to protect sensitive information. Interestingly enough, quantum provides a solution also. Absolutely. So that, <clears throat> that's quite a transformative kind of um, era that we are entering in many ways. Um, I think it'll be great if you could give us a kind of scan of where the technology development is happening at this point of time, uh, at what stage we are in, who are the major players uh, in, this, in this regard, and what kind of investments are coming from which part of the world um, I'm sure major countries are, great powers are in, um, investing a great deal. But you can give us a sense of who are the major players, 
what kind of uh, investments, where can we expect this technology development to go in, a, in that sense? Absolutely, Raji. Uh, certainly, we see a significant amount of investment occurring globally, mm. in broadly in the, the quantum, the span of quantum technologies. Mm. A recent uh, very quick scan that we did suggested to us that there's about $35 billion okay. that have been committed okay. to quantum technologies broadly across the world, primarily to date from sovereign uh, investments. Mm. But interesting enough, we are seeing private investments starting to step in, and I'll come back to that mm. point. But of this 35 billion that we see committed to date, about 40% of that uh, is originating, we understand, out of China. Wow. So they've certainly made a, a na conscious national choice to really take on leadership within this emergent field of quantum. So of that significant investment, we added up then uh, the investments across the world from NATO countries. Mm. And it turned out to be about equal okay. at 40% 40, uh, 40 as well. Okay. But we do see other countries such as in India, yeah. very significant uh, mm. investment with over a billion dollars mm. to the national quantum mission. Right. So that's sort of from the global perspective uh, what, what some of the, the major developments are. But we are now, just over the last two or three years, mm. starting to see the private sector okay. starting to jump into the fray. You see, quantum technologies, particularly if you look at computing, uh, sensing, metrology, are somewhat longer time horizons. Yeah. Communications, and I'll come back to that mm. later, mm. is a bit nearer dated. Okay. So we've seen more investment there. But on the computing side, we are now starting to see fairly significant investments. We believe in the last year, so 20... 21 of the order of about 3 billion was invested by the private fat sector okay. uh, into the uh, quantum technologies as well. And we believe as we look into the out years, you're going to start to see a, a, a greater emphasis from the private sector into these quantum technologies okay. as the commercial outcomes start to come within the horizon of, of being realized. But if you have to look at the top two players, would that be so US and China or who are the top two players you would say? Yeah, it, it's a, a little bit of a uh, broadly spread field. Okay. Apart from the giant investment out of China, yeah. we're st certainly starting to see some significant con commitments mm. um, out of the United States. Okay. So they have a, a national quantum initiative. In fact, one uh, which on the communication side looks to establish a quantum network okay. across all their national uh, laboratories okay. spanning the country. So we're certainly starting to see an uptick in investment in the United States. But if you look at um, the EU and the UK, mm. certainly we've seen a lot of significant investment over okay. a concerted period of time, okay. well over a decade in developing quantum technologies. Okay. So we and and then of course with India's commitment about I believe about it was eighteen months ago yeah, or so. That's right. We're seeing some some progress <laughs> here. Japan similarly is stepping okay. into the fray, yeah. and in 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 Australia, yeah. um, we have also made some commitments to select sectors okay. within the the quantum space as well. Okay. So in your earlier response, you did hint on a number of uh, areas where quantum will have implications on. If you can talk about uh, the implications for the cybersecurity or even the national security, broader national security, how is it going to pan out in a sense, the quantum implications? This is a really important area, <coughs> Raji. In fact, we've been doing a lot of work with the World Economic Forum. Okay. And in fact, there will be a, a flagship report okay. released on the impact of quantum on cybersecurity. I believe that should be in about two months from now. Okay. So I would uh, okay. encourage those that yeah. are watching yeah. this uh, yeah. podcast to keep an eye out for that. But broadly, what is going to be the impact? So what we will see is because of the enormous compute power that quantum computers yeah. will be able to bring to bear, a number of technologies that we're using today yeah. to keep our sensitive information secure will be broken. So we need to think very carefully about alternatives that we will deploy to continue to keep our military secrets, our health information, Absolutely. financial data, yeah. valuable intellectual property, safe and secure. These are the basis of our, our, our nation's success and uh, indeed um, of, of the vitality of our economies. So interestingly enough, 
what we find is that quantum offers the ver a solution to the threat posed by quantum computers. And just very quickly backtracking a step, so what will quantum computers do? Today, a lot of our cybersecurity dep the, depends mm. on complex mathematics. Sure. And the fact that you can do certain operations easily one way, yeah. but they're difficult to reverse. Right. A quantum computer will be able to reverse some of these very easily. Therefore, we need new technologies and techniques mm. to be able to protect against that. And quantum, in terms of quantum random number generation yeah. as one piece, and an emergent technology called quantum key distribution yes. will offer us mechanisms to mitigate against this. And the final piece of that will be advanced software, which we believe will be immune to quantum attack. Okay. So the National Institute of Standards and Technology mm. in the US mm. is leading an effort to come up with these so-called quantum resistant algorithms. Okay. So these three pieces, quantum resistant algorithms yeah. and the ability to exchange keys through quantum key distribution mm -hmm. and true random number generation wrapped up with an ability to manage encryption keys at the scale of millions or hundreds of millions. Because as we go to 5G, 6G, yes. you're going to have to have enormous numbers of secure conversations. Absolutely. And that's where quantum can provide a solution as well. Okay, terrific. Um, I think I'm going to wrap up our conversation with a final question on the global rules of the road. Uh, what kind of rules of the road do we have? Uh, what, the, what are the global conversations that we have in quantum technologies and how we need to regulate? Um, is it possible to regulate? What kind of regulations can we bring in? And uh, more particularly, what kind of role can India, Australia and other major Indo-Pacific powers um, uh, play in um, sort of uh, laying out, bringing out some rules and global new rules of the road for this technology? Certainly, and, and very timely question, <coughs> Raji. So, in fact, um, you know, looking at governance and regulations, there was a report put out at the end of last year, oh. again, to which uh, Quintessence Labs contributed, which was the governance principles for quantum computing. And it lays out nine thematic pillars, yeah. which I won't touch on, mm. but it does provide a framework for regulators okay. and policymakers to start thinking about these technologies. Um, we had a very interesting discussion at Ricina last yeah, night, right. where we talked about you know, whether banning yeah. uh, could be a, 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 a solution. Yeah. But as with any emergent technology, very difficult where exactly. it's globally to ban it. That's right. So what we need to think about is what are the rules that we can put in place mm. that will ensure that we get equitable yeah. uh, and ethical development of these technologies. Yeah. And I think that report provides some guidance okay. as to how we could start to, to think about this. And certainly, <coughs> as I mentioned, there's this other report coming out on quantum cybersecurity, mm. which will again touch on some of these issues and provide some broad guidance um, for policymakers mm globally to, to think about right. how we control this um, amazingly powerful set of technologies to ensure that as a society globally, we get the best good that can accrue from this. Certainly given um, the emphasis that's being placed on these technologies by middle powers, emergent powers, and indeed uh, larger emergent powers such as India, uh, and the emphasis that both India and Australia have on quantum, I believe we're very well placed to make not only technological contributions to the development of mm. the field, but equally from a regulatory and policy perspective to have important and meaningful um, impact on how these technologies play out and evolve over the next decade. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vikram. I think this has been a terrific conversation. Uh, you managed to break it down uh, because I think, like I said in the beginning, everybody knows about, talks about quantum technologies, but without really understanding what the technology really is and how does it really uh, play out in our daily lives and so on and so forth. Um, so thank you, for, uh, thank you for this illuminating conversation and uh, we look forward to hosting you again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raji. My thank pleasure. You, thank you.